Today, we are here to listen to Justin Neely talk about fast-tracking the design process. Justin is passionate about WordPress and helping people build a powerful online presence. Along with that, he gets the opportunity to lead a small team at GoDaddy every day, help um, aspiring entrepreneurs and web pros make their own way each and every day. By day, he works as supervisor. By night, he's designing websites and possibly fighting crime. The jury is still hung. Welcome, Justin Neely. So we got through it. A little bit of a tech, tech issue there, but we made it. Uh, hello, everybody. My name is Justin Neely, as she said. Uh, today, I'll be talking about uh, go back. Uh, fast tracking your design process. Uh, a bit about me before I really jump in. Uh, all right. Uh, please, if you guys get any like really awkward photos of me while I'm talking, at Justin Haley, make fun of me. I love it. Uh, I'm a dad. A beautiful little girl, Paisley, there in the little image. She's my absolute world. I'm a GoDaddy employee. I, uh, I run a small sales team at, at GoDaddy. We do hosting support with a lot to do with WordPress. That's really where I kind of got my start with WordPress. I'm a side hustler as well. I, I've, I've, I've had quite a bit of side hustles from anything from like helping startups to designing sites or um, almost a coffee shop once. That was uh, not the thing for me. But it all went back to WordPress. Uh, again, WordPress enthusiast for over seven years, but I, I didn't really experience the, the in real life IRL uh, WordPress experience until earlier this year. I got to help out at WordCamp Phoenix. I was, uh, as the lead organizer said, a, a booth babe helping out at the GoDaddy booth. Uh, and I got to experience just how awesome this community is and how helpful everyone is. Just, just the support was overwhelming. It didn't matter what you did or who you're from. Like we're all here for the right reasons. And that's just to help each other. Uh, shameless plug: I'm WordCamp Phoenix organizer. Our WordCamp is in February. You guys want to come visit a state that's super hot right in uh, the winter time? Because it's freezing in Britain for me. Um, so how I WordPress. So like I said, I live in uh, Phoenix, Arizona here. So I get about a week of nice weather and then super hot. But in that week, I'd love to kind of just hang out in my hammock, uh, best WordPress sites. And if I'm not there, I'm at a local coffee shop or or at this this uh, this bar right across the street it has great Wi-Fi, even better beer. If you guys know any great craft beer places, hit me up after. I want to check them out. So let's jump in. So with, with designing a website, right, like the, the entire process can take forever, especially if you're a designer and you have multiple clients. So you've got to have the initial consultation. You've got to get the material from them. The, the entire experience start to finish takes way too long, right, especially just the designing and back and forth. But it doesn't have to. It doesn't have to take as long as it does. Uh, right, like there, there are things that we do over and over and over that we should eliminate. We should kind of basically get a head start. And that's what this talk is about. It's hopefully, fast tracking that design process, as the title says, and give you those countless hours back to, to go to Tahiti or, or have your vacation, spend time with family, or whatever that, that looks like. So, I really like to kind of gauge the experience in the room. Um, so, it's going to be a little hand raising. Uh, bear with me here. So. If you've created more than 10 websites, raise your hand. Basically, the whole room is awesome. How about 20? Still a lot. That's fantastic. 30? Over 50? All right. Super tenured. I love it. So we all know how, how long that process takes, and some take even longer than they should. Uh, so I'm a big statistics guy. I have a, a podcast that I ran in the back, and I was always coming up with statistics. My buddy would make fun of me because that's just what I did. Uh, so some stats. How long does it take to create a WordPress site? This is from a couple. First three are from WP Shell. So a dead simple blog, uh, basically no customization. It's two hours of work. You're not really doing much into it, right? An informational site, home about, contact, maybe a blog, and a barely lightly customized theme is eight hours. A simple e-commerce site, it's 20 hours. And then from WordPress.com, it can take anywhere from a few days to a few weeks to create a website. That's a long time. So as I look at, at just trying to be more efficient so I can handle more clients or just get more free time, right? Because I'm a side hustler. I have a full-time job, plus I'm designing websites. If I let it, that's my entire life. I, I don't want it. 
And so I looked at it and tried to figure out, what do I do every time, on every site, no matter what? And what I found is, I'm setting up probably the same plugins, themes, and WordPress settings on almost every build. And then I'm setting up my page framework. So, so not so much like the, the, the actual client customizations, but just getting the overall flow of how I want the page to look. I did that over and over and over. And as a designer, I, I pretty much have kind of like the same style, right? Like you do some of the same things over and over and over. So based on that question I asked you guys earlier, the, raise your hand if you've done more than 12, 10 sites, 20, 30, and 50. If you build more than 10 sites, that's roughly 25 to 60 hours where you're doing the exact same thing, right? And that's, that sounds ludicrous to me. Like when I do the math, like if I had 25 to 60 hours right now, I could do so much, probably most of it would be sleep. Um, but uh, the bad news is that time flies, right? The good news is that you're a pilot. I love this book, right? We have, we have the power to control our time and what we do with it. So I want to tell you all about uh, about a story. But so when I was like a, a first time newbie designer, about uh, six months or a year, and somewhere in that mix, I wanted to like, really impress my clients. I was all gum ho. So I wanted to do everything from scratch, like literally everything. I would mess with the, the theme CSS and create my own child themes, and even mess with more CSS. I'd try to make my own plugins while I did all all that, and it was a colossal mess. So I want to tell you about a time where it didn't, that didn't work out for me, right? So I had a client, I'm going to call him Frank in this, this example here, um, to uh, hide his identity. But uh, I had a client named Frank, and he was a friend of a friend. He, he was a startup business consultant, and he's been preaching to his clients, you have to have a powerful website present, right, uh, to kind of wow your customers, but he didn't have one, right? It's like the cobbler shoe, uh, kids have no shoes. So he, he talked to me, he's like, hey, I really need a website. I need to basically back up what I'm talking about. So I'm like, great, let's, let's absolutely do it. So we go through the consultation, figure out what he wants. He wants basically just a place to, to show off his brand. He wants a couple little courses he can add to it in a membership site. So when he has his clients, he can go through them on there. So I go, cool, go ahead and do it. I go, Let, let's go ahead and make this happen. So I go, go start go, going to work, right? I, I went out, still that newbie designer, I went out and found this, this brand new theme that had this, what I thought at the time would be this cool like visual builder that was automatically integrated in it. I found some new membership plugins that I hadn't worked with before because uh, I thought they were super cool looking and, and I, I started to work. And what I found is that theme was awful. It was just atrocious. Like the, the, the builder inside of it wasn't, it didn't flow. I had to click and drag things over and over and over. I had to do different browsers, I had to wipe my plugins, I had to restart. Then it was just chaos for a week. And I had I told him by a week I would have something. So I showed him what that something was, and he's like, What what is this? Like <laughs> you're right, I, I get it, right? Like it, it's been a struggle, but I'm gonna make this happen. I'm gonna get it done. So I keep going, another there five days go by. I've sort of got the homepage going, sort of have the contact. The courses aren't working that well. I was trying to mess with the CSS to make it presentable and work with this theme. And it just wasn't working, right? And I was literally looking like this guy, just head, hand to the head, just like, I don't know what to do, right? Like I, I was at a point where I thought to myself, like, maybe I just stick with my full-time job. Maybe this isn't for me, because I am failing hard. <coughs> so then I talked to him, like, hey, I really don't have much yet to show you, but give me another day or two, and I'll have something. I'll have something that I'll be proud to show you, right? That it's my work at that point. So I sit there and I'm trying to think, how the hell do I like, get out of this? I've already spent a week and a half, week and a half of my time, and I really don't have much to show for it. I don't have much to, to say that, hey, at least I got you something. So then I remember I had a client about three or four months back um, that I that was kind of similar. It was in a, a startup business consultant, but it was a consultant of some sort. I already knew the theme that they were using, I knew the plugins. So, so what did I do? I stole from myself, right? Some of that little puppy there. Um, I, I stole, stole my own design, so I cloned it, threw it over, and then customized it to Frank's liking, like everything he was trying to do. Uh, I had the, the membership set up, I had the, the courses, I had his, his face on the homepage, it looked like, beautiful, right? And I presented it to him. And that, that process took me probably like four or five hours to do and redesign and make. 
after a week and a half of headache, and he was so happy. And I was like this, yes, I made it. Uh, at a point where I, I thought I was about to quit, but I decided to steal it for myself and try something new and, and do what I already knew and, and go from there. And that whole experience was the start of something magical, right? And that's exactly what I'm going to be basically teaching you all to do, to hopefully skip through that and essentially steal from yourself. And you, the way you do that is you create a template library. So as, as a designer, you've built a, a variety of different sites, over 50 for a lot of you. Um, so, so you create your own template library, uh, all your plugins that are already set up that you pretty much use on every single build, right? Like we all have our security plugins we use, we all have our optimization plugins we use. You go and, and set up basically the same settings almost every time, and then same thing with your theme, right? You set up the, your, your template to have the, the couple themes that you use. The settings already set and the pages as well, set up just the frameworks, not necessarily the customizations, but the, the frameworks of the page. So you have your, your big hero image, your call to action, your contact, what have you. And then, as I was creating this talk, and I was trying to find other examples of people that already do this, and do this incredibly well. And it, it's not so much web designers that are doing it, it's theme developers, right? Like if you ever look at a theme demo site, they've already created that template library. So that's what I'm going to teach you, kind of create that same model. So we're going to look at two different models, that two methods of madness. So the first being a beta. Beta is one of the most popular themes on ThemeForest. But what they do is they have their basically, they have a hub website as their demo page and a, a ton of example like, or uh, homepage versions. Like on this, they have 19 different homepage versions. And it's not for them, it's for people that get that theme and they can start from it and build onto it. Same thing with you all. Create your hub website, create your couple different versions of your homepage, however you guys as typically do it, right? And then when you have a new client, you edit from there. So Beta has all sorts of different versions of their website uh, that people can use. You guys do the same thing. Have a couple different versions of your website that you can use and start from and skip all the, the, that remedial stuff that you do every time, right? The, so that's the first one, have a hub, and then multiple versions of your page. The second way is B-theme. So B-theme, instead of having just one site with a ton of different pages, they have a ton of different websites with different versions of that site, right? So with just their, looking at their demo page, they have their default theme, they have a gun range, renovate, tailor, cakes, there's burger, which I'm super hungry, lunch is right after this, uh, school, coffee, agency, and cars. They have different versions of their site uh, tailored to different potential clients that want that theme. So you can do the same thing. So if you have a site that you do for restaurants, you have a couple different restaurant type sites. And maybe you, you, you do some car salesman type car, uh, sites or what, what have you. Whatever that looks like. So if I had a, a, a restaurant client, I would just spin up my this, the burger site or whatever page that I create uh, as my template and then I'll edit it from there. Allow me to save that time to use to go find more clients or just relax. So to, to create your template library, there, there's a lot of different ways to do this, right? Uh, I'm going to show you guys how to do it with cPanel, but I'll give a couple shout-outs to other ways. Uh, some pros and cons as well. So if you if you all like using backup plugins such as like Updraft, um, this one's a, a pretty popular backup plugin. You can create your your website, your template site and just create it as a backup. So when you need to spin up a new site, you just restore that backup and then build on from there, right? The downside with this is that your plugins and themes don't stay updated. So that's something to kind of keep an eye on, just because if you haven't messed that in a while, you have to update like 12 plugins and themes, things can break. So I wouldn't recommend this one, but if by all means, use what's, what you like best. There's multi-site management tools such as MUDEV that you can create basically backups and spin up and clone. Uh, there's ManageWP or GoDaddy Pros, Pro Sites Template Builder that kind of does this the same exact thing. Uh, but again, I'm going to be showing you cPanel. It's pretty universal to a variety of hosting and companies that almost anyone can use. So inside of cPanel, we, there is this section called Install Chunk. It's your home for installing applications and, and whatnot, right? So we're going to go ahead and just install a new WordPress build. <coughs> go ahead and throw in the details what domain you're using. What I would recommend is having an example site 
Like my uh, would be like example .pro of, of my actual site, right? So I'd make my just my example site or my template site, however you wanted to do it. Uh, username, password, backups, the whole nine yards that go into this. But with with creating your template library, uh, so my recommendation, unless you your sites are vastly different, use the Avada model. Use the the one site with a version variety of different pages uh, that you can kind of just delete the extra pages and customize from there. It's going to make your lives a lot easier. And then kind of as you grow and expand, you can do what I typically. So I'll have my example site that has my, my variety of different pages, of, of my home pages, my contact about, my plugins already set up, so on and so forth. And then I'll clone that site and create an e-commerce version of it. I'll just set up the WooCommerce, have the, my demo products, customize the pages to look like an e-commerce site. And I'll take that and clone it again and make a WooCommerce site, uh, I'm sorry, membership site, right? If you have different types of versions that might require more functionality, you do this. And then these sites would be live, so then you can make your updates of your plugins and whatnot in real time. Uh, so you don't have to go and potentially break a new build, because then that's going to cost even more headache. Uh, but then so on and so forth. So any other potential genres of site you can do, just keep cloning your template, cloning your template, cloning your template. So how do you use this in the wild? So you have a client, and now you, you don't want to do it from scratch. You want to use one of your templates. So we're going to talk about Lisa. Uh, it's a fictitious client, but for my example here. Uh, so Lisa needs a new website. She's a, a health nut. She just got certified to be a personal um, uh, nutritionist. Thank you. Um, so she's going to be a nutritionist. So she wants a place to basically show off her brand, show off what she does. So we go through the whole consultation piece, the, the yada, 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 talk to them, get the material, and go to work. I'm going to use Installatron to clone my template to her site. Right. So inside of Installatron, you can go ahead and click that little arrow with the, the two splitting arrows. It's going to take an exact replica of that site and do the, the heavy lifting of, of the search and replace. So it's going to replace the, the URLs with your, your new ones. So you don't have to go do that. Uh, it makes your life super easy. So if you're hosting the, the, the website for your client, you would just choose their domain name and then build it from there. But if you're doing a, just a, a staging type site, Choose your, your template uh, domain and then put it into a new form. And then you go through whatever settings you want to do, or just let them manage it themselves, and then click clone. It'll spin up, takes probably 30 seconds to a minute to actually clone the, the site over, and you have your new build. All your plugins are already set up, no extra lifting you have to do there, other than maybe a, a couple of tweaks, depending on what you use. Your themes are there, you have one to three themes that you've already set up, so you can really go and pick which ones works best for you. Um, and then you're going to kind of clean up and customize this. So you're going to have extra pages that you're, you're not going to want to use. So go ahead and delete those extra pages that you're not going to use. Uh, you delete any other or themes that you're not going to use because you don't want that excess bloat. And then delete any plugins you may not need on this build, right? So, and then I'll, I'll, I'll end up with this plugin list for, for an example. I have A3 Lazy Load just for optimization. There's a lot of optimization stuff that I use. Uh, I to optimize uh, Elementor and Elementor Pro just because it's super easy to hand off to a client, let them make their edits from there. Uh, Manage WP Worker, uh, so I can back up into my site and stuff. Uh, Smush, again, optimization. Security, security, it's a mouthful. Uh, just for my security preferences, I have WebCrafted Clearfly, it helps get rid of some of the excess that I don't uh, really need on a, a WordPress build. And then Yoast for, for SEO. And then my themes, I'll go ahead and switch up my theme depending on which one that I would use. Again, pages, you're going to delete extra pages and then customize it from there. So I'll take a just generic website template that I, I've had built in my library from a while ago, and she gave me her color scheme, she gave me her images that she wants to use, and some of the text on it, right? I didn't spend a whole lot of time really customizing this for a fictitious client, so for the sake of example, they're going to look pretty similar. So I go ahead and I spin up, throw her image in the back, I increase the, the header space a little bit so it shows more of her. I'll add the little content that she's given me, add some images and text. Now with this, what you don't want to do is just literally copy uh, cookie cutter every website because then all your sites will look the same. That's not what this is for, right? It's just to help get you that head start. So you can go and customize it to that client's need. Add extra stuff if you want to add extra stuff, like go wild, but at least save those hours, right? So, and then you just migrate the website to your client. 
So use a tool that you're familiar with. If you like backup plugins like Updraft, use, use backup plugins. Use Installatron. You, there's sort of a migration path. doesn't always work the best. Uh, you can go old school if you really want to, but FTP and MySQL and do search for places, please, I wouldn't recommend it because that's just a ton of time. Uh, Multi-site management tools or our, uh, our pro sites can help manage it over as well. So with this, right, when I, when I really started to do this, I almost felt like I was cheating my clients because I would charge them the same amount, but it's taking me a lot less time. Uh, and that, that's a valid feeling to have, especially when you're, you're using your own temple library. And I don't want you to feel that way. I want to uh, tell you about uh, a, a story that, that somebody really told me that really hit home. So we have, we have this, this, this small business owner. He needs a logo. So he goes around, searches around, and finds, finds this, this logo designer. Uh, and she, he goes to the office, talks to her, and goes, great, I want this logo, it's my business, gives them all the information. She goes, perfect, I can absolutely, absolutely make you a logo that you can be proud of. Uh, it'll be 500 bucks, and I'll, I'll make it happen as quickly as possible. So he goes, great, that, that, that sounds pretty good. Uh, here's the 500 bucks, uh, when could I have this by? So she, she goes, one second, she sits down, takes about 15 minutes and creates a, a beautifully stunning logo. Like, don't get me wrong, but she created it in 15 minutes. She goes, here you go. And he was kind of pissed off. He's like, you spent 15 minutes for my 500 bucks. Why, why would I pay you that? And she goes, no, you didn't, you didn't pay for that 15 minutes of work. You paid for this. She goes, opens up her closet door, now pours out hundreds and hundreds of artwork and paintings and logos and everything that she's done to get to that point where she can make you a damn good logo in 15 minutes, right? And that's what you're paying for. Same thing with this. Your clients are paying for your experience. Just because you get it done a lot quicker, they're probably gonna be happier. They don't have to wait as long, right? So that, that's, that's what I really want you to take away with. Don't feel like you're cheating your clients because you are using your own template that you created. It's your experience. You're still gonna customize it to them. That website's still gonna be beautiful at the end of the day, and they're gonna get it done a lot quicker. Then you can focus on building up their brand or whatever other service you have now and with that extra time, or go on a trip to DVD. Um, so that, that's, the, that's the essence of my, my talk. We'll do a little Q&A in case anyone has questions at the end. But there's really four levels of takeaways that I want you all to have from this talk. So level one, walking away saying that wasn't a complete waste of time. That's my bare minimum, right? Uh, level two, try this at least once. See if it works for you. So if it does, then I'll take you to level three and use this with all your builds. Save that time, expedite your process, and become more efficient with your websites. And then level four is, is the one I, I really want you all to do, is to teach someone else. That's the power of WordPress. That's the power of the community that we're in. We're all here to help each other, support each other, and teach each other. So if this works for you, go ahead and teach someone else. Or anything you've learned from today that, that really like, touched you, teach someone else. Help them out. See if you can brighten their day with a couple little pro tips or even go on a huge training course for all I care. Like do something to help each other out, right? Um, so again, at Justin Neely, uh, talk to me on Twitter. I'll be at the GoDaddy booth if you guys have any intimate questions or just want to talk. Um, but that, that's all I have for you. We'll, we'll do some Q&A in case anybody has questions. No questions? <laughs> Oh. Do you use your, your own theme or do you use commercial theme? Uh, usually use commercial themes. So I've been pretty reliant on Aveda, Hestia, uh, and then Divi for some customers or clients. Yeah? Are you using are you posting a lot of your clients on your hosting? Uh yes. Okay. So you consider doing like a multi-site install and then so I, I messed around with multi-site before. One of my side hustles was essentially my customers would pay for a template that would spin up and then they'd build from there. So I guess I have tried that. I, I like just having everything pretty separate. But I love multi-site though. Any other questions before I let you all go? I know it's lunchtime. We're all, we're all getting antsy. <laughs> yes? Do you find all your sites start looking the same using this methodology? Uh, they did at first. It took me a little bit to really make them my own, because uh, I was trying to just be quick with it, right? 
Uh, but then you start to kind of get your basic framework and then you'll add your different sections. Uh, and I try to look at my, my past like three or four designs to make sure it does look unique and it does look towards their brand. So yes, it, it's absolutely a thing, especially just getting started with it. It can take a little bit of time to make it your own, uh, but then you're, you're good from there. Yeah? Are most of your clients in the same industry? Uh, no, as all over. Uh, that's why I, I, I was going to do the, the beef theme method with the multiple versions of the page, uh, but I keep my templates. Uh, that one was a really old one, but most of my actual templates are super generic that I can then spin off to where, whatever they need to do. Yeah? Are you able to hand off your Yes, I actually prefer that. I don't like to host my client's websites. She basically asked if, if I migrate the, flights, the sites over to my client or if I keep it in-house. Uh, I'll use like our, our GoDaddy Pro tools to help that migration or use whatever works best for you. Yes. Yes. And then I'll also do maintenance services on top of it, but I'd rather have everything in their control because uh, I don't want to own their stuff. I think it's theirs. Cool. Uh, again, thank you all so much for attending this session.